It is good. Amen. It is good. Somebody, it is good. Well, if it's not good, we'll get better. Amen. It's good to be back with you all in this wonderful location. And one thing I want to kind of reiterate is I want to announce to you that you are a saint. Amen. To the saints of God. To the saints. Amen. What does it mean? Skipping going on here. All right. They'll, they'll switch it. Switch it. What does it mean to be the saints of God? Keep going. Keep, going. keep it going. All right. Yeah. Praise the Lord. Anyway. The saints of God is quite different from the religious world. The religious world, when you die, they make you a saint. When you die, the religious world say, well, this is saint so and saint this and whatever. Amen? The difference between you here this morning is you do not have to die to become a saint because Jesus died to make you a saint. Ah, hallelujah. Can you get what I'm saying here this morning? Jesus died to make you a saint. If you believe that, lift your hand and say, I am a saint. Amen. <laughs> but somebody says, more than a coat of paint <laughs> is a blood of Jesus. Amen. Make me a saint. Hallelujah. To the saints of God. This morning, four o'clock, I had this revelation to speak to the saints. This is not for everybody. This is for the saints. Hallelujah. Because there was a song used to say, when the saints go marching in, amen. Can you lift your hand this morning and say, Father, I'm thanking you this morning for the privilege to be in a company of the saints of God, hallelujah. Who are standing and sitting, hallelujah, in heavenly places, glory to God. I came to speak to the saints of God. And if you're not there as yet, you, at the end of the service, you will be, Amen. The, the job of the church is not to make you a saint. Jesus did that. The job of the church is to perfect the saints. To get the saints mature. Amen. To get the saints knowledgeable. Amen. To make the saints understand who they are in Christ. And that's where the knowledge of God becomes important. Because today I... I am excited, but I'm overflowing inside, so I've got to keep it calm because I'm so excited for you. Because when you get this message, it will transform you because the knowledge of God takes away panic and fear and brings you into betterment. Amen. How many of you this morning thank God that you have a knowledge of him? The, the, the message is going to be to equip the saints, prepare the saints, but also to let the saints know who they are and understand the timing of where we are right now. Amen. The study of the end times is known as a big word. It's called eschatology, which is the, the study of future and all these things. And isn't it such a wonderful event that the Bible is being fulfilled? Amen. The word of God is accurate, it is exact, but it needs to be revealed, amen. And before I came in, a particular sister, God bless her heart, she says, what is all of this happening? Is Jesus coming? Is the rapture going to take place? What is all of this happening, happening, amen. So this morning, would you bear with me as we go into the word of God this morning? Let's go to the book of Revelation chapter 19. If you can turn to that quickly, we can go into that. I'm going to try to preach as much as I can to download in you. I may not be rhyming today, but I am sure that you are going to get a word from God. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Revelation chapter 19. And because of the, the time constraint, I would like to announce to you this scripture in your ear today. In verse of Revelation chapter 19, it says, And I fell at his feet to worship him. Now, this is John receiving a revelation, but didn't understand his positioning. Amen. And he says, I fell at his feet to worship him. And he said unto me, See thou do it not, for I... For I am thy fellow servant. Amen. And of thy brethren 
that have the testimony of Jesus worship God for the testimony of Jesus. Get ready, somebody. For the testimony of Jesus is the what? For the testimony of Jesus is the prophecy. Now, before I continue, how many of you like to go to the pool? Anybody like to go to the pool? Show me, raise your hand if you go to the pool. Swimming, yeah. We put it, some of you went to the pool? Now, there are two sides to the pool. There is a shallow side and there's a deep side. And they said the shallow side is for those who can't swim. And the deep side is for who can handle it. Amen. This morning I come to speak to you on something that is not shallow, but something very deep. Amen. And it's going to help you to grow in the knowledge of God. Amen. The spirit of prophecy is a testimony of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Let me read a little further for you so you can get. And I saw the heavens open, and behold, a white horse. And he that faithful and and in righteousness he do it judge and make what his eyes were as a flame of fire and on his head were many crowns and he that had a name written that no man knew but he himself. And he was clothed with a vesture dipped in blood. And his name is called a? One more time. His name is called a? You'll have Bibles this morning. Amen. Some people think the Bible is, uh, is the word of God. But I can tell you the word of God is beyond the Bible. It is a person. Amen. The Bible is beyond, you see, some of us, we, 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 I remember fondly that we used to, when we're in trouble, we hug our Bible, we kiss our Bible, we sleep our Bible, and still we have trouble. Because we have mistaken that the Bible must, the Bible under your pillow can't help you. The Bible next to you can't help you, but the word of God in you is a difference, amen. Somebody give God a praise, Hallelujah. The word of God will never be defeated. Somebody say amen. amen. The word of God is higher than any other book that ever has been printed. Amen. Because you know why? I give you something very, uh, very relatable. Amen. Say relatable. Of all the trouble in the world and all the writers and all the great philosophies and all the great books that religion have. I found a strange coincidence. That anytime something happened in the world, people refer to the Bible. They said the Bible says so. Can you all say amen to that? Lift your hand and says, I am a believer. I am a saint. I have word. I have revelation. I walk in light. Because I'm a child of the light. Amen. Somebody say hallelujah this morning. The Bible is written in such a way that there is an Old Testament and a New Testament. Bear with me if you can. Amen. The Old Testament is uh, given to prophecy. It has prophets. Amen. Are you, are you here with me? And the prophetic realm was very impactful and insightful that God used to send prophets with words to people. The prophetic, amen was under one direction. The whole of the Old Testament was pointing to one direction. The coming of a Messiah. Amen. <laughs> Isaiah said that his name shall be called Wonderful and Counselor and, and Prince of Peace. How many know that? Amen. Amen. Isaiah chapter 9 verse 6 says that he, the government will be upon his shoulders. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Excited. Amen. Amen. And there was many more prophetic realms that were speaking of the coming Messiah. The strange thing about it is, they spoke it, they prophesied it, but when he came, they couldn't recognize him. 
Can you hear, can I have an amen? When he came, and today there is similarity. Let me go on. There's a similarity because today people talk about news. Israel. They talk about inflation. They talk about economic situation. They talk about plagues and nuclear disaster. But they cannot bring themselves into revelation. Amen. Because if you are walking in revelation, you will end your frustration and enjoy your salvation. Somebody give God a praise. Hallelujah. You will not be looking for tribulation. You will be looking for jubilation. Amen. Come on, somebody say hallelujah. You will not be looking in frustration. You will have the joy of your salvation. Somebody lift your hand and says, I'm I am living in the joy of my salvation. It's a good thing to have you know, a bunch of Christian people. Oh, when Jesus, why Jesus can't come quickly? Brother, he came already. <laughs> and he came to do something much more than just, just to, 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 to die for your sin. If he had to die for your sin, then he would have just died for your sin and went to heaven. But he did more. He sent the Holy Spirit. Amen. The spirit of prophecy. Somebody say hallelujah. hallelujah. So, Let's go into the word. So all the prophetic writing was there in the Old Testament. Everything was there. And the Pharisees and the scribes and all who were uh, keepers of the law, they were all waiting for the Messiah. But something happened. The Bible says that when he was to be born, amen, nobody even knew that it was happening. He bypassed the, and surpassed all that was exceeding in the mind. And he gave, the, the, the Bible says that, the Virgin Mary was 40 years old. She was on her own. She didn't know nothing about nothing, but God have his eyes on her. Amen. Somebody lift up. God takes nobodies and make them somebodies. Church need to grow. The church need to grow. Amen. And more you know is more you grow. So here's a word. Here's a word for you. I, I, I don't really come to be clapped up. I just came to tell you the truth. Amen. Most people miss it. Prophecies could come on. All the prophecies in the world. You can have all the knowledge and everything and still miss Jesus. You can have all the intellect and all the grammatical things and you still miss him because the spirit of God must reveal it. Amen. Flesh and blood cannot bring you to this place but the spirit of my father. Amen. Let me know the word say hallelujah today. So, so the Bible says that the, 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 the people were, a greatest event was taking place on the earth. All the prophecies was coming to pass. A virgin was being conceived. She was bearing a child in to, uh, And the Bible says that while that was happening, three, we didn't say trees, that's a, that's a myth. Wise men, say it again, wise men, Mag, Magi, that pronounce it? Magi, Magi, whatever you call it. Ma Excuse my pronunciation. They looked up into the heavens and there was written in the stars something that causes them to leave their home and follow the star. As they were following the star, they didn't know anything about anybody. But that star led them to the place called Jerusalem. Could you say amen? amen? They entered to the street and they entered into the court and they walked right in and they says to the king and uh, King Herod and his people, where is he that is born the king of the Jews? They said, well, taking place. How many of you know, on a particular time, you could be in church and miss the coming of the Lord. You could be reading the Bible and hearing preaching and miss the coming of the Lord. The Bible says that they said to one another, what are you talking about? We didn't even know that he is coming. Now, that story could go on, but I want to just stop there and say, the wise men, the wise virgin, the wise builders are in this place today. That is for people who are on the deep side of the pool. Come on. Say it one more time. Say, I'm a wise builder. I'm a wise man or woman. <laughs> I see I told you quickly there, right? Amen. 
and I'm also wise virgin, meaning that I'm keeping my oil in my lamp. Amen. Now, the first time Jesus came, they missed him. The first time Jesus came, they rejected him. The first time Jesus came, they didn't understand him. Am I here with you? Amen. Do you think that anything will change the second time he come? The second time he come, would they miss him? Will they miss him? Will they miss the event? I, I love to hear you interact with Do you think you'll miss him? Tell me, tell me. The knowledge of God's word must be rightly divided. Amen. The word of God should not and will not be on an emotional state. Neither will a false prophet or someone who thinks and know can bring it into reverence. It must be brought by alignment with the word of God. Amen. Amen. One thing that I know in the Bible says that the message of prophecy, the prophecies of Christ on his coming will be mocked. Will be mocked. Amen. Will be scoffed. Somebody say amen. In second Peter chapter 3 verse 3 says that man will say, how long he taken? So long I hear that message. And he's not here as yet. Amen somebody. The message that I'm preaching to you is the one of that be scoff. People mock, scoff and laugh, ridicule and say things to you. You know what they say to us? Those people going to church, they're looking for an exit. You know what? They are weak. They can't handle pressure. They don't know how to handle life. So they're looking for a pie in the sky. And I tell them, you're looking for a hole in the ground. <laughs> I'm not looking for a hole in the ground. I'm looking for the coming of the king. Lift your hand and say hallelujah. <laughs> Amen. Is someone in the, up there, can you just put, as I call the scriptures, can we just get someone to help me? So I want the church to see the, the scriptures. Second uh, Peter chapter 3 verse 3. It's very good for you to read it with me. If you can, let's read this quickly. Second Peter, chapter 3, verse 3. Amen. Knowing this. Somebody said knowing this. Knowing this. That's what you got to do. You have prophecy in you. Once you know. And knowing this, not second hand. Not to, knowing this first. That what? That they shall come in the scuffers walking after their own. Amen. Are you there with me? Now, let me finish this by saying that all the prophets, most of them could only arrive at Jesus' arrival. But when Jesus came himself, the three wise men came with gifts. How many of them came with gifts? I'm developing this so you could get it. They came with gifts and one brought what? Gold. And what brought what? And one brought what? Thank you. Great job. But the, the wise men didn't just give Jesus gold, frankincense, and myrrh as, a, as something that they had excess of. It was in line with prophecy. Amen. It was in line with prophecy. Amen. Are you there with me? And what was gold? The gold was given only as a gift to kings. Amen. And that gold was a reference that Jesus, the, that which will be born, he will be the king of kings if you have. Somebody say hallelujah. He'll be the what? Yeah. And what does frankincense stand for? Frankincense is related to the high priest. And the high priest is where our Jesus is. He is the high priest who can be touched with your infirmities. So we no longer need to run to man. We run to him who is our high priest. Amen. Who is making intercession for you and I. Are you there with me? Right now he's making intercession for the saints of God. Amen. The Bible says that that scripture that he, he was given was frankincense. And he got, but what does myrrh? What does myrrh represent? That's what my thoughts are. Myrrh is really where the prophets use. Amen. It's a, it's a, a herb of the prophetic realm. Amen. It's associated. So therefore Jesus was to not only be, he was not only to be the king and the priest, but he used to be a prophet also. 
Oh. Are you, ready? Are you ready for this this morning? Amen. Jesus is king, priest, and prophet. He is son of God. Are you there with me? And he's son of man. He says the first time he came as son of God, they couldn't figure out him. But as he coming back, he says, he didn't say I'm coming back as son of God. He says, in the days of the son of man, you will know who I am. Amen. I'm talking to people who know I'm talking about. Say amen today. Son of man. Amen. Why would he use this description? Because it's cryptic. It's not for the average believer. It, the Bible says in Matthew 24, in Luke 21, and Mark 13. I'm just going to quote it for you. Amen. The Bible says the disciples saw the wonderful temples that were in Jerusalem. And they commented to Jesus, boasting, saying, this temple takes 46 years. This temple takes so many long time. And look how magnificent it is. And Jesus looked at them and says, hey, there's not going to be one stone less upon another. That's going to all crumble. Amen. Are you there with me? If you believe the word of God, wave your hand and say, oh, Amen. Tell somebody, mock me, but I believe. Amen. Let it scoff at me, but I believe. Amen. No matter how long it takes, it will come to pass. Amen. Listen carefully. When he enters into, the, into that realm, he starts, the disciples asking in Matthew 24, can we have the brethren just put it up for me, verse 1, 2, and 3. I'm just going to tell you some things from my head, but I don't like to talk from my head. I want the word of God to be in your, in your, in your view. Amen. It says here, they ask a bunch of questions, but it was literally condensed into three things. What shall the coming sign of your coming be? Amen. What shall the end of the age be? Are you there with me, somebody? How many of you know that if you, ever, if you ever think that you are sitting in a, 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 a time where you could twiddle your thumb and get away with one foot in the world and one foot in the church, you got a mistake happening. If you ever think you could come in and just try to rush the crowd, Hey, you got to make a mistake. We are living in crucial time. Amen. amen. We are living in critical time. Amen. amen. Bible says in okay, Matthew 24. I just need a church that could be able to hear the word. Amen. amen. Brother, we want to see the word. If you can put verse, uh, verse 3 and 4. Amen. amen. So, so the operative word is. The disciples, after hearing Jesus prophesy, the great prophet, the son of man, said not one stone will last upon another. One stone will be up there. The Bible says that they came. I want to look at this word. And he sat on the Mount of Olives. And disciples came to him. How? Say so what again? Amen. amen. Now I'm here to preach to the saints of God. So I can say amen. amen. There are some things that the world could never get. But you in your private time with God will get it. Amen. I am I talking to you? Amen. He gives open statements, but he gives private revelation. Disciples came to him what? Privately. Let's look at um, Mark 13. Amen. Verse 3 or 4. You see the same thing. I wish I have a time to show you. Amen. Privately. Are you there with me? Say me, say privately. privately. Say within my, within my spirit. Amen. Look again. Look again the word. I'm not making it up. It's right there. In Mark chapter 13 verse 3, what it says? Peter and James and John and Andrew ask him how? Privately. What did they ask him? So the knowledge, everybody can have knowledge of coming things, but only the disciples and saints will have the private Revelation of God, amen. If you get this, hallelujah. This message is not designed for you to, to be scared and to Jesus and things to scare you and to bring you into, into, into blood pressure. Some of you, when you watch your news, the pressure start going up. Some of you can't sleep at night. Some of you hear a noise and say, Lord, it's me, I'm ready. The dog barking. Amen. Because you're not settled in your faith. Come on, I'm not talking to somebody. 
When you are settled in the faith, Peter, he was, he was so settled at one time. The Bible says that they called for his head. And when they went in the prison, he was as strong asleep. Amen. Because he knew his God. Come on, somebody. Amen. Second Thessalonians chapter 2. Amen. Brother, just help me there. Second Thessalonians chapter 2. Amen. Second Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 1. I'm going to keep on saying stuff. Amen. To get it. Yeah. Glory to God. There it is. Now we beseech you, brethren, by the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ and by your gathering together unto him. Verse 2, brother. This is a verse, good scripture verse for the time we're living in. It says here. Verse 2. I'm going to wait. I'm waiting for the Lord, so I better wait for it. Amen. Is peace from the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Verse 3 now. Be right, man. Verse 4, go quickly. Verse 4, I'm going to get. See that we ourselves glorify you in the church for patience and faith. That, and in all your persecution and relation that you what? What's the word here? You what? Endure. That you what? Endure. This is the key to the, to the revelation. Let me go to verse 4. Right. Verse 6, no, brother, quickly. Let me just get this. Because I want to bring it in. Second Thessalonians, amen. Say what? There is a scripture that talks about that seeing that you are righteous, seeing that you are you are you are not going to be that you are, you receive, amen. That's it. Yes. Seeing it is righteous thing with God to recompense tribulation to them that trouble you. In other words, the trouble that is coming is not for the saints. All right, now tell it. Can I say it again? Say it again. Say, this trouble is not my trouble. This is not my portion. This is not my cup. You who are not grounded and rooted in God, well, I think you need to get rooted and grounded today. Amen. Lift your hand and say, the mark of the beast is not for me. This economic trouble is not for me. Lift your, I know what I'm talking to somebody. This is not for you. The signs and the times, the heathen, is scared, but not you. Come on. Don't be like the unsafe who see what's happening in the moon and the stars and whatever, and they now get jittery and they want to call for prayer meeting. Friends, today is a day of salvation. Now is the accepted time. Today is a day that you have to rejoice in who you are in Christ. Amen. Could you all say hallelujah? The Bible says in scriptures that Jesus on the Mount of Olives he broke through the, 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 the barrier because he was not going to speak just like the prophet of Elijah or whatever. He went beyond and he told us not the setting of his coming as a babe, but he revealed the coming as his Lord. Amen. Amen. Are you getting that? Amen. Amen. Bible says absolutely clear that he says in the last days that he began to say things in Matthew 24 and Matthew, um, Luke 21, and Mark 13, and I'm just going to leave that for you to study on your own. Are you okay with that? Yeah. But he, I can group it into two or three something called categories for, to, for the reference of time. There are three categories you have to study in order to understand prophecy. And the first category we have is a category, category we call world signs. Somebody say world signs. Signs that are taking place in the world. Can I have an amen there? Amen. Then there's another category called church signs. Somebody say church signs. Signs that are taking place in the church. Are you there with me? And the third category is Israel. The sign of Israel. Am I talking to anybody here today? Are you getting anything from me here this morning? We got world signs. We've got church signs and we've got Israel, but we can't mix up the sign because we need to know which sign is where. Amen. Those signs, listen to me. You see, he didn't say, he said, no man know the day and no man know the, but he didn't say no man know the year. Think about it. Did I say it again? He said, no man know the day 
No man know the hour, but they say no man know the year. You see, we laugh, but it's so, 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 so sophisticated. Because he says there's going to signal things. And you who are spending private time with God know who I'm talking about. How many of you know God says speak in dreams and visions? Come on. How many of you know God says speak to his people? Lift your hand. Wave your hand. Say, hey, 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 hey. In China, there was a, a strange phenomenon taken among the animals. The birds would not go, uh, would not go on the trees and they were... Um, Find the people looking, what's going on? The roosters will not uh, crow, the hens will not lay the eggs, and they were like, what was happening? Even so, that some of the animals wanted to leave the barnyard and went out in the middle. People were strange, they were looking, saying, what's going on with these animals? Only to realize, one week after, a great tsunami came. Man, who was supposed to discern the time, but animals can't, amen. Jesus says, you who are able and capable of discerning, saying if, the, if you see a certain cloud, you say rain is coming. If you see a certain, you can discern the sign of the clouds, but you can't discern the coming of the Lord. Amen. I'm not ashamed to preach the gospel out of this. Somebody say amen. amen. The mocking, the scoffing. Let's go to the world signs. Could you all say hallelujah? hallelujah. The number one sign of the world. Which is given to us through two prophet, three prophetic people. There are three prophetic signposts Jesus points to. Number one, he says, as it was in the days of Noah. Could I have an amen? amen. He prophetically pointed out Noah and his generation for a prophetic sign of his coming. Amen. He then gave us another prophetic sign. Of, 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 and it talks about, my friend, as it was Jonah. As Jonah the prophet. Could you all say Amen. So he talked about Noah, he talked about Jonah, and the third one he talked about was Lot. Somebody say amen. amen. He says, remember Lot's wife. Amen. 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 I'm, I'm feeling the spirit of God talking to somebody here. Amen. amen. Jonah and, and Noah and Lot. Let's talk about Noah first. The Bible says the number one thing that you, if you, if you connect the dots, Every country in the world is fighting and grappling with crime. Could I have an amen? amen? Crime rate is going up. Amen. And more to put money and more to put electronics and more. It can't stop it. Amen. amen. Because the Bible says crime is not a problem of the hand. It's not a crop problem on the outside. It's a problem of the mind. Amen. Are you hearing me? Hallelujah. And what is that equivalent to our time? What does that say, brother? It says here in the book of Genesis, it says that God saw man, he saw that the very thoughts were evil. Amen. Amen. And one of the things, one of the great signs of the end time is evil imagination. Baby. Amen. If you believe, I say amen. amen. This imagination can't stop. Some of you there, and when you hear something, you can't seem to connect good things in your life. You, you imagine the worst first before you can imagine good. Amen. That's how we are. We are guarded. We, 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 why, why, why are you doing that for me? How, because worse first. Amen. When we should be taking God first and everything. Anyway. The, 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 the thing about the end time is there will be violence everywhere. Somebody say amen. I'm speaking to world signs. Could you all say amen? Say with me. Say violence. I'm preaching in your spirit. Violence. In, in back home and all in the Caribbean and all over the world. The school system is violence. Amen. Kids no longer going to school to learn. They're going to school to dominate and change. This is what we are in. Amen. World signs. There will be violence on the earth. Somebody say amen. There will be. I'm just going through my head. Am I okay with you? Amen. World signs. There will be gender problems. They wouldn't know man from woman. I know somebody wouldn't love me when I preach the truth. Second Timothy chapter 3, brother, if you get it there. Perilous time will come. Men will be lovers of themselves, boasters, proud, incontinent. Amen. Are you hearing me? Hallelujah. Heady and high-minded. Amen. Having a form of godliness but denying the power of God. Ever learning. I mean, somebody say amen. Am I preaching to you? Amen. That's the truth. Oh, you want to come to church and uh, bless me, Lord, heal me, Lord, and let me take care of me, Lord. It's not about you. It's about Jesus today. Somebody give God a praise. Hallelujah. 
It's not about you and your family. It's about Jesus who he is and what he has done in your life. Amen. Amen. It says here. So, so the, the, the thing about it is it's going to have a, a great national distress. The Bible says that the world, the economies of the world will be distressed. Men's heart will be failing them for fear. There will be natural disasters. Am I talking to anybody here? I didn't want to preach this, but the Holy Spirit says, tell my people, amen. Prepare, amen. Get ready, hallelujah. There will be great national desire. There will be sign in the sun, the moon. Jesus is talking, amen. Isn't that all that true? Isn't that all? How many know, heard that scripture, amen? Signs of the world signs. World signs. World signs, amen. Let's go again to world signs. It talks about something very important for me. It says that there will be a time where there will be a unification. Amen. There will be a religious marriage where the world will all be in unity. But it will be called something called anti. It will be anti-God. Anti-Bible. And it will lead to someone called anti-Christ. Are you hearing me? Hallelujah. It will be an anti-spirit. Come on, somebody. Are there anybody hearing me preach? Amen. If you're trying to be good, they will be anti-good. Amen. They will, they will persecute. The last is anybody who wants to stand for truth, there is, is something that has been preached and propagated. It's called a blanket response. Everybody wants a blanket everything. We are all under the same covers. I got news for you. The child of God is not under cover with no devil. Uh, they expose the enemy. Give God the praise. Hallelujah. We are not going to cover it. Hallelujah. We are not going to be under the covers. Uh, we are here to expose it. Amen. That's why some of you are hated on the job. Because your spirit uh, is not in a line with the world. Amen. Somebody in this place, lift your hand and say, bless the Lord. If I'm all alone, I'm blessing the Lord. Because persecution is coming for those who dare to be a Daniel. Amen. Persecution is coming for those of you who are standing for the truth. Can I see somebody? He said, Jesus says, hey, don't you feel that people are going to love you? They're going to hate you? They're gonna, they were going to use everything possible to defame you and to bring you down. But if they didn't receive me, they wouldn't receive you. But rejoice and know I'm with you. Amen. Somebody give God a praise. Hallelujah. Signs. You want to preach popular messages? Got a church full? We just got to compromise and blanket everything. Help me talk the truth. Amen. You want to get a scanty church? Just pull the covers. And see what's happening. Amen. We can't blanket it. Because Jesus says straight is again. He says broad is the road that leads to destruction and narrow is again. Jesus is saying it's a narrow road. Amen. It's a hard road to travel. Somebody say amen. How many are blessed already? Amen. Come on. Lift your hands. Say hallelujah today. The economic collapse is going to bring. Only in the New Testament. This is not recorded in the Old Testament. Only in the New Testament can you get these kind of teachings. The teachings, that's why you need to find out. Why is it there? Because a third of your Bible is prophecy. A third of your Bible is written in prophecy. In the New Testament... It's so much of stuff there that we just bypass and say, well, I'm okay. No, Jesus wrote it for a purpose. It is written for a purpose. The Holy Spirit gave it for a purpose. Amen. Amen. What he said, and I'm just feeling the Spirit of God just speaking to you. He talks about um, uh, uh, a strong delusion is going to come. A man will believe a lie rather than the truth. Because the world will be in deception. Amen. Be not deceived. How did you think? Adam wasn't deceived. Adam rebelled. Because Eve was deceived. Amen. How was Eve deceived? How was Eve deceived? I'll tell you how. Adam was supposed to watch over the situation. He was to tell his wife and tell her the whole revelation. He never gave her the full revelation. He said to her, if you only go close to that tree and touch the tree, something will happen. <laughs> so when the devil came provoking her and tempting her, he heard her revelation. He knew she didn't have a full revelation. So he entered there and got her. Amen. That's why the church needs to not stop coming to church to learn a song and learn the revelation of God. Amen. The whole revelation, the full revelation. Amen. 
Adam and Eve did what? Adam rebelled. Eve was Eve. Don't listen to the snake. Don't make the mistake, mistake of listening to the snake. For heaven's sake. Escape the lake. Come on somebody, hear me, man. I don't know why I'm saying it, but I'm telling for heaven's sake, don't listen to the snake. Amen. Even though he put certain things in certain ways. Friends, let me tell you something. Don't let, and I'm preaching this on wherever, don't let the news confuse you. You are not supposed to have a worldview. You're supposed to have a word view. You're never supposed to let the views on television confuse you with the word of God. Come on, say hallelujah. Because there's brainwashing taking place. But you are blood washed already, amen. Somebody say hallelujah today. I know there's power in the name of Jesus, amen. Let me go quickly. I, I, I just love speaking. Are you enjoying this already, amen? The world signs. They're going to be anti-God. They're going to be anti anything that God would say, they're going to say it's old-fashioned. It's outdated. It's not relatable. And some people are going to jump in the new, fresh knowledge, fresh wisdom. But friends, give me that Bible. Amen. It was good for them. It will be good enough for me. Amen. Somebody say hallelujah today. How many of you know the blood still works today? Wave your hand. How many of you know prayer still works? Amen. Let me give you a thing. If some of you don't come Wednesday night, but if you're here, you know how good it is be. Amen. Tell somebody when technology fails, neology works. <laughs> Come on, somebody say hallelujah. See nice things for yourself. When technology fail, when you can't use the phone, amen, you can still reach a throne. Amen. Are you hearing me? Hallelujah. Because God knows his own. Amen. When you get a busy signal on earth, heaven is always open. Amen. Come on, give God a praise. I'm talking to somebody here. Are there anybody still believe in prayer? One time I walked in, and uh, this good, great friend of mine, a great doctor, and well-known in his field, and um, walked into his place, and the, the, the place was full with people, his office. And he called me inside. I said, what's up? And he says, hey, close the door. So I went inside. He says, here's a bottle of oil. Pray over it on a spoon. Anoint me. <laughs> Anoint the place. Amen. I'm not kidding. That's a great thing. Outside, people waiting for the doctor to see them, but I'm anointing the doctor. Because <laughs> he knows. He knows that he knows that there's something more than medicine. And I want to tell some of you, I don't care how good your doctor is, Dr. Jesus is better. Amen. Lift your hand and say hallelujah today. You know that they could give you a report, but Jesus can change your report. Amen. Are you hearing me? Hallelujah. Wave your hand and say, praise the Lord today. World signs, sicknesses, these things are coming in. These are man-made. These are, these, are, these are gravitational things that are coming on the earth to create a situation that you will feel that God is not relatable. But friend, I am here to preach the saints. And the saints know that God is and will always be. Amen. Church signs. Go say church signs. Say it again. Say church signs. Say it again. Watch somebody and say lukewarm. That's the number one problem. Neither hot nor cold. I'm not bad, but I'm not good. I'm not going doing wrong, but I'm not doing good either. I'm going to church, but I'm not reading my Bible. I'm hearing, but I'm not believing. It's scary, isn't it? Jesus said, rather you be hot or cold. I know where you stand. But you see people who are in middle ground, hard people to deal with. I went to witness some man. And he cursed me. And I smiled because I knew I will win him. Because you know why? He told me, Jesus is, and you know what? I did win him. I went to witness another person another time. And person says, I agree, I believe, but I'm not ready. It's a hard one. He came back again. I, I know, I know, I know, but not my time. What is, it's difficult when you're lukewarm, amen. The Bible talks about this church of Laodicea. He says, you are rich. You have everything. And yet you are poor. Amen. If there is a generation that has the most, is this generation. Is there ever a generation that has the most? Wave your hand and talk to me. Amen. Is this generation. Amen. 
But they have the most and there's the worst. Because he who have more, we require to do more. Amen. How many you know we have two income or a poor outcome? We got more amenities. We got more things in the house and less love there. Come on, wave your hand. Are you hearing me? Amen. We got more of everything that we want. And sometimes in life we want more and more and more. And more you get is the further you get from God. Because... Stuff do not make you happy. Only Jesus does that. Amen. Are you hearing me preach here this morning? Church sign. Number one. Itchy ears. Touch yourself and says. Uh, itchy ears means you're always wanting by a new prophet come. A new man come. New, you got to be careful with getting itchy ears. Always running to hear something. To tickle your ear. But not challenge your faith. Amen. How many hearing the word? Amen. That's what the Bible says. In the last days, they will heap upon themselves teachers. That's a church sign. And the, and the third sign, Israel. Somebody say amen. amen. Israel is a great sign for us. I had the privilege of being in Israel. This, my heart is torn when I look at the many times I went there and see how the, the, the way it, things are turning out. But, but, Israel is just making my faith get stronger. Amen. You know why? It's accurate. The word of God is accurate. Amen. No matter where news take place. News could be happening in Africa, wherever. It happened and it dies. But when news come from the Middle East, they believe Alif is here. Because something's happening in Israel. Amen. In 1967, Israel was a new nation. 1947-48, Israel was never in plan. They didn't have a plan of Israel as a state. And supernaturally, it was provided that the scripture said, where Israel is supposed to be a state, it's supposed to come into existence. It was not on the cards, but God made it happen in one day. That's true. Amen. A nation was birthed in one day. Came into existence. Amen. I hear me. And therefore... All of, of, of the prophetic realm started to get excited. Oh, well, Jesus come back. But remember, remember the statement. One day in the eyes of God is a thousand day. Yes, in the eyes of man. Amen. Anyway, the story is Israel became prophetic uh, in, in, and fulfilled the requirements of having a nation called Israel. Amen. But it's not Israel. Because some people have the wrong theory that God replaced Israel and the church take over. No, he haven't. Somebody say Amen. He still loves his people. Amen. I can't do anything about it. He's still the God of Israel. Can I have an amen? He's still the God of Abraham, Isaac, and? If you have your hands, I can't change that. He can't change that. Amen. Amen. And bless the Lord. Anyway, so Israel became in 1967. The, the whole the nation says we're going to wipe out Israel. We don't want them to exist as a state. And they gathered together. And they all came together with one unification force. And that force was to wipe Israel out with their guns and their tanks and all the things. Am I talking to anybody here? In 1967, I had the privilege of talking to some of the, the soldiers that were there. In particular, one guy, he told me he was there. He was fighting on the Israel side. And he, the, 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 the general told them, hey, we can't win this. We can't fight this alone. So he gave every man a shema to read and he says, listen, I want everybody to go to the tent and say this prayer. Hear, O Israel, the Lord thy God is one God. I want every soul here, I want everyone to whisper this. Hear, O Israel, the Lord thy God is what? Hear, O Israel, the Lord thy God is what? Hear, O Israel, the Lord thy God is what? I come in here. Hear, O Israel, the Lord thy God is? And while they were saying that prayer, they said suddenly something happened in the midst of the enemy camp that they started to get confused and they started fighting one another and that which was coming to attack, they started to hear noises and song. I tell you, the God of Israel is still alive. Even though we don't have it recorded in the Bible, he is alive. Hallelujah. Do you know what happened? They left their tankers. They left their things. And they all started to run. Israel wake up and realize that the enemy is on the road. What do you do when you see an enemy running? You take over. Amen. Somebody give God a praise. Hallelujah. What happened? What happened? Amen. On that war, it says that Israel began to claim land. And began to move into the promises of God. And so I said, listen. This is what God promised me. And I am not letting go. Hallelujah. And they went on and on and on and on. Until suddenly, they said, stop. Because the whole United Nations said, stop. 
Because you're going to destroy, you're going to take off everybody's land. And that's where we got the problem where people were kicked out of the land. And they want to come back. Am I talking to anybody here? So the history is really something. Where the same land that was occupied, it's not telling you a lie, same land that was occupied with the wrong people, it never produced. And when the chosen people started to go there, they started to take the desert and make it bloom. It started flowers and, and sand. I went there and I picked up the sand and I look in, well, how is avocado tree so full of avocado? It's not the sand, it's the God who's watching over. Somebody give God a praise, hallelujah, come on. It's not agriculture, it's God who supply your need, amen. Am I preaching to anybody here? Come on, wave here. And that's how now they have this group of people who's claiming that Jerusalem is theirs and put, split it in half. And, but I'm telling you, Jesus said something. He said the same, the angel came and said, listen, on the Mount of Olives, ye men of Galilee, why stand ye gazing up into heaven? Why are you... Why are you in awe? Do you know the same Jesus that is up here is coming back down again? Amen. Give him praise and glory. I'm going to finish it. Somebody say hallelujah. The same Jesus that lifted up from this Mount Olives will shall come back down again. Amen. So what's, it, what's the master plan of the enemy? We're going to take over Olives and block that. We don't want to get the Mount of Olives. is not for no Jesus. We want to, and guess what? They could fight how hard it was. He's coming back again. Amen. The last part of the prophecy is very profound. We are between something called the 70th week of, of, of Daniel. We talk about 69. I'm just talking quickly because I know some of you understand the deep side of the pool. 69th week stopped. Amen. And the 70th week. But between the 69th week and the 70th week we have that we're dealing with Israel. In between there we have us, the church. Somebody say amen. The church... It's getting ready to take a flight out of this world. Somebody hear me, hear me, hear me, hear me. Somewhere, you may laugh at me, but I, when I'm going up, I will stop by and say bye-bye. I'm airborne. A man told me this, this is serious. He said he and his wife stopped sleeping in the same bed. I said, why? He said, the Bible said, two shall be together. One will be taken and one be left behind. <laughs> he said, but Lord, he didn't say. He said, but I want to go too and she want to go too, so we buy two bad. <laughs> Wrong interpretation, brother. <laughs> I don't hope all little girls buy two bad. Eh? <laughs> and I'm not separating them my husband and wife, okay? <laughs> Please, I'm just telling how a man saw it final thing is if I have a box if I have a, a, a paper clip in a basket full of paper are you hearing me and I'm trying to get that paper clip and I have to search it and I can't find all kind of rubbish inside here they say the best thing to do is take a magnet and when the magnet passes over no matter how much paper on any day if the magnet is strong enough it will jump up and they go, but the paper can't grump up. I'm talking to somebody here. When Jesus passes over this place, no matter how much you will try to keep down, who have his spirit will jump up and will be caught up and we'll be making our Jackson. Somebody say hallelujah. Raise your hand and say hallelujah today. Did you get a message here this morning? Amen. Clap your hands and give him praise. Hallelujah. Come on, give him praise. Hallelujah. I'll be caught up to meet him, caught up to greet him, caught up to meet him in the air. I'll be caught up to meet him, caught up to greet him, caught up to meet him in the air. How many can say, I know this way, goodbye world, I stay no longer with you, goodbye. Hey. I stay no longer with you. I made up my mind to go God's way. You're singing well. All right, all right, all right. I don't, I don't want to rush you. I just love you guys. But we just, we don't have no, we have no down time here. We are up time all the time. <laughs> Amen. Friends, I want you to go home not expecting to take the mark of the beast or tribulation. 
expect the coming of the Lord. Amen. Amen. Live ready. Live prepared. To live in fear. Live in expectation. Blessed are those who are waiting for his coming. With joy, we welcome him back. Amen. Amen. Somebody say hallelujah. hallelujah. So some people laugh at you and tell you, you're looking for something in the sky. Just look at them and say, I'm not looking for a property in the ground. My home is not here. Amen. This world is not my home. I'm just a passing through. My treasures are laid up somewhere beyond the blue. The angels beckon me from heaven's open door. And I can't feel like hope in this world anymore. Sing with me. Oh Lord, you know I have no friend like you. If heaven's not my hope, then Lord, what will I do? The angels beckon me from heaven's open door. And I can't feel like hope in this world anymore. God bless you. We're going to stop here. I have to stop, but did you enjoy the word today? This God bless you. We got prayer. We got, we just preach the truth. When you know. I can't feel like home in this world. Come your hands say, oh Lord. Come on.